As we look back at 2021, we take a look at the issue of resource control, the politics around it and the realities of it all. And 2021 had renewed calls for restructuring from both sides of the political divide. How realistic and ready are we for these calls? Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cohn. Nigeria has been said to be one of the countries immensely blessed with both natural and man-made resources. In 2021, the control of the country's resources faced a rift as the federal government was repeatedly called on to allow the state governments control their own resources and pay taxes to the government. The Niger Delta region has been one that has made this call. Former Governor James Ibori of Delta State once said, and I quote, The fight for resource control is all about allowing the Niger Deltans to control their oil wealth and pay adequate taxes to the central authorities as, as it is done in a true federation. End of quote. Now, during the last days of 2021, former President Olusha Gwambasanjo experienced a backlash when he stated that crude oil in the Niger Delta region belonged to the country and not the region. Well, joining us to discuss this is uh, National Publicity Secretary or Public Secretary of the uh, of PANDEF, Mr. Ken Robinson. Thank you very much, Mr. Robinson, for joining us. Good evening, uh, Nigeria. Happy New Year, Nigeria, and um, um, and Mary Ann and everyone in Plus TV Africa. Uh, it's nice to be here, and I wish all of us a better twenty twenty two. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. So. Uh, Every time we, the issue of resource control comes up, it only mostly is talked about from the prism of the Niger Delta, being that it seems to be, um, you know, the gold um, pot of the nation, for want of a better word. Um, and we saw in the last few weeks uh, leading to the end of 2021, uh, the back and forth between um, Chief Clark and former President Olusha Gwabasanjo on the same issue. Now, let's go back. Uh, to what former governor James Ibori had to say about this issue of resource control. Every time we talk about it, it seems maybe that we're looking at the oil in the Niger Delta alone, but then there are resources all over this country, as we know, that we're blessed with. Why can we not at least realistically address this issue? Mary Ann, is because every other resource in the country is being controlled by the people. Who owns it? Gold in Zafar has been mined for years, and resources in other parts of the country, natural resources, um, precious stones in other parts of the country, have been mined by the people of those areas. And, and that's why anytime we talk about resource control, uh, it, is, it looks as if it's the Niger Delta people that are talking. It's only the oil and gas in the Niger Delta region that federal government is focused on because it's easy money. You, you don't put anything to it. People come in, uh, extract food, uh, sell, and then pay to you. Uh, while gold in other, in other precious stones in other parts of the country, individuals and private organizations and agencies and companies are mining these resources. It's only the resources in the Niger Delta that federal government is focused on. That's why it is annoying and, 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 and very unnecessary comment by former president, uh, we do respect to him. We, we have said in our release, in our response to his statement, that he's been mischievous because he understands what we're talking about, the ownership of oil in the Niger Delta. The, the, the fishes in the waters and the seas and rivers of the Niger Delta, do they belong to the federal government of Nigeria? The animals in the forests and mangroves of the Niger Delta, do they belong to the federal government of Nigeria? People go in and, and, and hunt animals uh, and sell. Uh, our people have been fishing as, as long as we exist in the rivers and, and we go to our farmlands and plant crops and, and sell and harvest and sell. It's the same thing as the food that God has given to us in the, in the Niger Delta. Uh, perhaps because we don't have the technology, proper technology to, to extract them and sell. Otherwise, it's our oil. And the passenger and Nigerian government should know that. And, and when we talk about resource control, as you rightly said, uh, the days of James Ibori, the resource control, there is even a little bit shift now. We are talking about true federalism. Uh, and that the Niger Delta people are ready to say, look, let us go back to what it, it was in 1963 when 
the, the regions control 50% of their resources. And, and so we are saying generalization should go back to 50. We are not even at this point now saying we want 100% and then we want to pay taxes to the federal government of Nigeria. But if we are forced to the, to the world, perhaps that's where we will go back and we ask for 100% resource control. Talking about true federalism, it, it's it's one thing to ask for. It's, it's one thing. It's another thing to to actually have true federalism. We know that we're somewhat operating a unitary system of governments in the country, which also one way or the other kicks the idea of a true federalism. Our constitution, on the other hand, has to be tweaked if all of this must um, happen. But I also see that these conversations are only mostly had on a political, you know, note. It's not necessarily. Uh, it doesn't mean that, realistically, this is something that we want to actually achieve, but it looks like it's a conversation that is had just to sway people to either vote for or support a person or a political party. Why do you think that is? Yes, this, these conversations could be political, and, but they are also realistic. Don't forget that at some point, the Niger Delta region was getting 0% of uh, resources. That was 0% derivation. At some point, it was 1%. At one point, it was 1.3%. And then before it came up to 13%. And all we're asking for is that there should be a review. Uh, we have stepped down the issue of 100% resource control. We, we, we are not... We, the Niger Delta people are very benevolent people. And we have shown enormous goodwill to the rest of Nigeria. And we are saying Nigeria should listen to us. Don't push us to the world. Listen to us. You, you cannot take our resources, plunder our resources, waste our resources... We are talking about trillions of dollars that have been ex exploited from the Niger Delta region and have been wasted as it were. We are saying, let the people of Niger Delta region receive commensurate uh, compensation, uh, some, some kind of compensation that is significant enough to say, okay, yes, this thing is gotten from our land. Nigeria is, is feeding up from it, and then we are also benefiting, benefiting from what God has blessed our land. With. That's what we are saying. And it's, it's a realistic and reasonable demand. And, and we, we think that at some point, Nigerians will listen to us and it will go beyond political uh, campaign agenda and it will become a real issue that all Nigerians will accept that we cannot have peace and unity um, except there is equity. Um, it, there are many people in several quarters who have argued that, you know, um, resource control is not necessarily synonymous with true federalism. Uh, they're saying that true federalism is a, utopia, a utopian notion of sorts. And, and they're saying uh, a, a federal system of government both emphasizes vesicle um, um, power sharing across different levels of governance. And at the same time, it's also asking for the integration of different territorial and socioeconomic units, which one way or the other uh, might not necessarily be a match for what you're asking for in terms of resource control. Yes, there, there is no perfect society, and uh, there is no constitution that is perfect. That's why there are amendments. Uh, even the United States Constitution of the United States of America, I understand, has gone through several amendments. And that's why we are asking for a restructuring. Restructuring, as, as it were, is a fundamental and uh, holistic amendment of the Constitution to accommodate some of the issues that we are talking about. The, the Governing All Progressive Congress set up uh, a committee that was headed by of Noel Ophire of Kaduna State on, on restructuring of true federalism. And they came up with a, a document that uh, we have cited and it's, 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 it's reasonable, it's good, it is acceptable. And, and we are saying that the Nigerian state should accept that, look, you have exploited a certain people. It's not just crude oil. Tomorrow it will be something else. Crude oil may not be there tomorrow and then there yeah, will be something else in another region. We are saying treat resources from, the, from, from any sector of Nigeria, any section of Nigeria, any region of Nigeria, with, with some level of difference to the people. Uh, let them receive what we used to receive. When it was cocoa, when it was granite, when it was coal and palm oil, it was 50% to the areas that those resources were, were, were produced. And so we are saying today the minimum is, is 50%. That's what we're asking for. Yes, there is no perfect document. There is no perfect constitution anywhere in the world. But we can improve on what we have. What we have, we have used it for 50 years plus, and, and it is not working. It is a faulty system that was imposed on Nigerians by the military. It, 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 the constitution first paragraph says, we the people. It's not we the people that produced that document. It was imposed on the citizens of Nigeria by the military. So we are saying, let us rework it and let it be a truly people-centered document. That's what we're saying. 
But we all saw the PIB, uh, the PIA that turned into the PIB and how it went, the 3% um, that was given to host communities. And of course, uh, the, the argument as to, um, you know, a certain percentage that was being, you know, given to, an, um, that the federal government awarded to, um, you know, uh, other frontiers. And it, for me, it looks like there's not enough ad success, you know, in terms of these agitations. Um, it looks more like the government it can hear you or either they're listening but they cannot do what we're asking them to do i really do, do, do not understand what is holding the hands of the government but then we have nida deltons um both uh, in the apc and the pdp how why does it look like there is no um you know united efforts to bring a success you know to this push for resource control one of one of the greatest weaknesses of the nida delta is that i've asked you imagine uh, the, 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 the several ethnic nationalities, the diversity in language and ethnicity in the magic of them. That's, that's what uh, uh, those who don't want us to progress have used against us over the years. And, and then uh, uh, on top of that, you now have political limits, political uh, um, sentiments. Uh, those who are for uh, the ruling party, of course, who want to maintain their positions in the party maintain their offices and their appointments so uh, they will hardly say or do anything that will be uh, seen as something not in tandem with the, with the government and, and that's that's an undoing when but, but if a region uh, is united such, in purpose for whatever the reason especially for an issue such as this also knowing the 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 eels that this the mining of this particular natural resource has brought to these Niger Delta communities. It's not just one Niger Delta community. If there's a unity of purpose, why are we talking about the prism of, um, you know, um, ethnic nationalities or difference in language? The purpose that is that is that is resource control is supposed to cover all and sundry. There should be unity of purpose, and that's what Andep has been working to achieve. And, and we are getting to that point. Today we hear some of our, our, our politicians on some party platforms make statements that are in tandem with the general view and hopes and aspirations of the Niger Delta people. Uh, we, we, will, we will get there someday where uh, those who elected to political office from the Niger Delta will speak as people from the Niger Delta because first and foremost they are from the community before they belong to a political party or before they occupy a political office. So we, we will get to that point where Niger Delta will speak on issues that consign all of us with uh, some level of uh, unity uh, in purpose. What is PANDEF doing to bring that unity of purpose? Because PANDEF seems to be uh, an umbrella body that leads in these kinds of conversation. We also know that there has been an adjour, um Congress of sorts that has been put together. I'm the guessing, Congress. Yes, uh, you know, pushing in this regard. How soon can we see a favorable um, position from the Niger Delta and a, uni a united front? Is this something that is achievable in the nearest future or is this something that we have to keep our fingers crossed on? Yes, we, we, are, we are definitely not where we used to be in terms of um, um, uh, uniting and uh, speaking with the united voice in the Niger Delta. We are not where we used to be. Uh, we are not where we want to be yet, but we are making progress and it, it might not be uh, proper to say, okay, by this time next year or in the next three months or in the next six months or the next one year, uh, Niger Delta will be speaking with one voice. No, there, there, is, there will be no time, don't forget, there will be no time where all of us from the Niger Delta, from the several ethnic nationalities uh, across nine states of, of, of the region, will speak with one voice. There will always be those who will be egoistic, who will pursue uh, very personal and parochial and marine interests for, for whatever reason that it is. People like that will always exist. And, and But majority of the Niger Delta people today, as we speak, are on one page concerning PIA, concerning uh, ownership of uh, uh, oil resources in the Niger Delta. Uh, when you go to the streets of the Niger Delta and you hear people speak, they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are vexed that people will continue to say that uh, oil, oil in the Niger Delta belongs, belongs to Nigeria, while uh, gold in Zampara, I mean, Oshun State belongs to the people of Oshun and Zampara States and other resources. The, the, the animals and, and cows and, 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 the, and, and the farmlands in, in some parts of the country belong to the people. And, and oil should be treated in like manner. That's, that's what the people are saying. And, and, and I assure you, that very soon Nigeria will feel the heat that Niger Delta is not at. 
Well, thank you very much. Ken Robinson is the National Publicity Secretary of PANDEF, and uh, we want to thank you for speaking with us. Happy New Year. Thank you so much. Happy New Year, and it's always nice to be here. Thank you so much for this opportunity. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we discuss the various calls for restructuring that took place last year and why we're still here having the same conversation. Stay with us.